Alan, Danielle, it's it's um, thank you for this opportunity to engage um, with both of you about your upcoming um, ST, uh, webinar series for STI on dreams and spiritual direction. And so I'm just going to start with a pretty broad question, and then we, we can see where this conversation leads. And um, so that question is, why should um, spiritual directors, companions, guides, what benefit can they derive in their practice from dream work? The first thing that comes to mind when I think about how I respond when um, some of my spiritual direction colleagues ask me, well, how does dream work go in a session? Like, what is, you know, how has that been helpful? And I tell them, honestly, it feels like cheating. It feels like <laughs> this very big, hard thing that you maybe sometimes into it about your directee that you're thinking that they're moving toward knowing themselves. Um, and you patiently wait for them to know, or something that you're both looking at and trying to figure out. A dream comes and it's it's like a cheat. It's like, you know, shoots and ladders. It just goes right to that thing and reveals um, the place in their soul that needs work. And um, I have found that it's much easier and more efficient for someone to receive that wisdom from a dream than it is through the process of conversation um, that sometimes takes a little more time in, in spiritual direction. So uh, yeah, it feels kind of like a cheat. Like it's just this wonderful insight for both the director and the directee into this image of what's going on in, in the soul, like a snapshot of that moment in time. Um, what is the thing that wants to be worked on? And it's, it's, it's just like this little message that tells you that it's a, a little cheat code. So that's mm. what I would say. Mm. Oh, I love that, Danielle. I'm, um, yeah, I, I feel the same way with my, with I, with my clients. I, uh, I don't use dream work with all of them, but the ones that are willing to do dream work, I just feel like we get we go so much deeper, so much more quickly. Um, I think of that quote from Meister Eckhart, who said, uh, "When the soul wants to have an experience." she throws an image in front of her and she steps into it. When the soul wants to have an experience, she throws an image in front of her and steps into it. And I just think uh, it's, the, it's the power of the images that come in the dreams that go directly, as you were saying, to the, to the heart of the issue. What is, what is that directee you know, needing to deal with that day? And, and they get a download, you know, they get a, they get a letter from the divine, uh, and the, in the, that previous night, and uh, we just do the work so much better, so much deeper. Um, so yeah, it it does feel a little like cheating, but it's 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 really wonderful. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, I I, I um, thank you for that. I mean, I I I wrote down cheating, and then I went, sounds like a shortcut, really. <laughs> yeah, um, that's maybe more what it is—a shortcut. You know, a shortcut. <laughs> Shortcut to the essence of, of um, and, and so let me tell you about a dream I had. I, I actually um, have been writing about this dream, and it's very, very quick. It basically says that the, you know, I, 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 you know, as a Zen priest, I refer, I don't talk about usually about the divine or God. I use terms like the beyond and the universe, right? Mm -hmm. And so in this dream, I'm in an Indian city and um, and I'm walking down and to the left of me, behind me, something sneaks up on me. Something sneaks up on me, right? And it's this eerie, almost ghostly feeling, deja vu, whatever. And it's, 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 it's really the beyond sneaking up on me, mm -hmm. calling me whispering to me mm. and it's not just any whisper it's this this um, liminal whisper liminal whispering that's happening and so i think that's really kind of at the essence of what we try to manifest as spiritual companions and spiritual directors as we accompany our companionees or directees 
is to manifest those ghostly hints of the divine into something more tangible. And so, so that's a, a little bit of a digression, but really the question is how do dreams, which are these ethereal kind of liminal intimations, then um, maps for our deepening our practice in our daily lives as as either uh, <clears throat> relating as spirit, spiritual directors or spiritual directees in our exploration of the beyond. I'll maybe I should rephrase that. Yeah, yeah. I'll 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 start, Danielle. Um, okay. Yeah, it's a it's a beautiful dream that you uh, that you share there, Seifu. I really appreciate that. It's the um, and and what I believe is that that all dreams come in the interests of health and wholeness, even even nightmares, whatever. Uh, they they are all leading us forward on the next step that we that we need to take, and it's always in symbolic language. Uh, so much of this work that we do, uh, we we call shadow work. That this is so the, um, the the dream images are coming up, and they're and they're bringing to our attention something that we need to pay more attention to in waking life. And so uh, those images are always uh, are are not literal, or almost always almost always not literal, and um, and so they represent something else that they're not obviously in the, in the dream. So, uh, so the task of the dream work is to kind of uh, unpack that symbol and begin to interrogate it and wonder about, okay, what the qualities of this object or person in the dream, uh, where are those qualities showing up in my waking life? And what are the what are the actions that are taking place? And so begin to make associations between what a, what was happening in the dream and in my and in my waking life. And that's when, and you and you can go through this process of of questioning, kind of interrogating a person, an object, an action. You give them a voice, and uh, and they'll begin to speak. They'll begin to speak, and and you can unpack the the symbolism of it. Um, fascinating process. Yeah. 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 And what's beautiful about it is unlike an idea, which can just be kept right here, you know, and we can analyze and we can objectify and we can rationalize an image really, it's hard to wrangle just a rational thing with an image. You know, people try to do it. I try to do it. But at some point, the energy and the emotion that's in that image is going to get at something deeper. So mm -hmm. again, it's that shortcut. It's the ability for an image to hold more than just um, head knowledge. It's the ability for that image to embody its own wholeness and call forth something. Um, it's the ability of that image to be paradoxical in and of itself. And again, all of that just deepens the work. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it reminds me that, you know, Carl Jung had a, he was very intellectual and he was very academic and he barely had an unpublished thought. He's got over 20 volumes of, of, of thinking and analysis. But what he said was that the, the power in unpacking these dreams is not actually the, the analysis. He called his psychology analytical psychology. In, in spite of all the interesting things that we uncover with analysis and, and analyzing the image, the real power for transformation in our in our own spiritual formation and working with others is just in encountering the raw image. That image uh, brings something, as Danielle was saying, that lands in the whole person, that lands in the body, that goes deep, and it's uh, it is so much deeper and so much more effective than just what's from the neck up in our very you know clever analysis. You know, the these reason is a filter, right? Our analysis is a filter at best and a, an obstacle at worst. And these dreams, kind of very similar to our contemplative practices, which 
help you know put the reason our rational faculties in the background as opposed to in the foreground where they want to reside they, they get pushed to the background um is that the natural entry point an, a more natural entry point into the beyond and to god and to communion with the divine in your view is that what the power of dreams reveals to you as a spiritual director as an and you mentioned uh, the terms shortcut, but is there something in the nature of the dreams themselves, either the image or the com the conveyance mechanism, <laughs> yeah, um, uh, that is more integral to that experience, right? More um, more than a rational apprehension. I think what I would say is dreams show the truth um it doesn't mean we always get it it doesn't mean that we always you know comprehend exactly what the dream is trying to tell you but as alan said you know we really believe that dreams come in service to wholeness and that they are an invitation for us to step into our wholeness and so they are going to tell us and show us a true thing and i think in in other contemplative practices, you know, there's just always this opportunity. Well, it's even in dream work, but there's always this opportunity to maybe bypass the hard thing or rationalize, you know, or, you know, you think about meditation practice and you're like, oh, well, how lovely my thoughts are. And then, you know, it takes a while before you start really realizing, oh no, this is, this is a mess. I got it. I got to see and own, you know, and dreams are just so honest. That image moves us so i think that's partly why that visceral quality um it does something similar to meditation right where you realize to you're observing something so you can see yourself truly but it's just so visceral and bodily that it's it's just harder to get around you know it's harder to mm -hmm. to get out of the work of a dream and so i think that's particularly why they're powerful mm -hmm. Oh, I love I love the way you said that, Danielle. It's uh, because in my in my own journey of of formation and benefiting from lots of therapy and benefiting from meditation, I find that that my conscious ego is pretty clever at avoiding the real issues toward my growth. I will I'm pretty clever at figuring out ways to get around. <laughs> What I really need to see, as you say, the truth, and uh, and dreams just will not allow me to escape that truth, and and they and they do it in a gentle way. They do it symbolically, and and they wait for me to to see to have that aha when I'm relating to the image. Uh, but they, uh, but you know, night after night, for me, it's the divine kind of you know, gently, relentlessly pursuing me pursuing my wholeness and uh, e even when my when my ego structure is resistant and doesn't want to change and wants to you know stay right here and with my illusions uh, the dreams just keep coming to open that up truth yes <laughs> well it, sorry go ahead go ahead Daniel. that's okay it feels this feels so um alive in me right now because I went to my dream analyst yesterday. <laughs> And, you know, wrangled a dream. And I thought, oh, there's just so much more to do. And I was telling my husband over dinner, I said, you know, it's like you do all this work and you feel that you've really gotten so much conscious awareness about your own BS, you know. And then the dream is like, hmm, <laughs> here, you know, and you think, oh, okay, that's very uncomfortable to look at, you know. Um, but so subtle and important to know. And so I was just saying last night over dinner, like, wow, I, it's really in it. You know, once you're peeling all those layers, I think the dream gets at this deep truth that is after you're somebody like, you know, most of us in this conversation will be who actively work on ourselves and try to present awareness and deal with our stuff and own, own it, you know, um, the way that dreams can get at those subtle places where they're, there, there are these patterns that are still holding you back. 
or there's something that you still don't know that you need to know. I just don't know what else does that with such subtle brilliance um, beyond dreams. Yeah. Well, let, let's talk a little more about that. And I, I, I mean, I'm bringing in a couple of, you know, so so we have these Zen retreats they call Sashins. I don't know how much either of you knows about Zen, but they're very intensive. And the one that we just finished in December, Rohatsu, we have three hours of sleep per night, right? Mm -hmm. And probably 12 or 14 hours of meditation per day in addition to other. And that's very, very deliberate. And it directly ties into this conversation, right? You break down those walls until you're basically in a walking dream state, right? And because it's so intense and so pronounced, all of the stuff you've been sitting on, trying to bury either consciously or subconsciously just, just jets to the surface. And there it is for you to process. Now, that's not a good way for most people, right? It's a little too radical. But the question for both of you is, how can we cultivate our dreams? How can we cultivate our dreams? It's definitely much easier than going on Zen retreat. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, I think it's really just about intention. I have, you know, people hear that you're a dream worker and they get interested and say, oh, well, I don't dream. You know, we probably, Anna, I both get that a lot. And um, I often say, well, you know, actually you do dream every night. That's been scientifically proven. But if you're interested in remembering and recalling your dreams, really all you have to do is just start saying that you want to do that. It's just like naming it out loud. Right before you go to bed, just say, I'd like to remember my dream in the morning. And 90% of the time, that's really all it takes to cultivate a sense of awareness about your dreams. Just ask and the dream maker will, will let you know what, what the dream is in the morning. Um, there's also other tips and tricks too, but I think it's just, it's being willing to be in conversation with them. So wanting to remember them and then wanting to write them down, I would say is the, is the easiest place to start. And I, I'm sure you have this too as well, Danielle, but I just have so many directees that uh, started with me for different reasons other than dream work. But then when, you know, we got to dream work and they said, well, you know, I don't dream. And I say, well, you do five times a night. And if you'll just, as you say, just ask for the dream, just have an intention. And I, I can't tell you how many people it's just like, oh my goodness, I had no idea. <laughs> so it's like, it's like a, a muscle that, you know, you haven't used. It's just been sitting there. Uh, uh, I think Jung's image of was that there was this uh, connection between, between this deep unconscious slash divine and the conscious mind. And it was like, it's a it's this channel of communication that's just kind of clogged up and once you start using it it opens up and the more you use it the more open it becomes and so people that didn't remember their dreams at all turn into epic dreamers mm -hmm. uh, and it's yeah yeah every morning a new revelation that's a, that sounds wonderful so so um let me ask you about this webinar series and the way you have both crafted it. What is, tell us more about what, what um, people who register can expect out of um, the webinar series that the two of you are presenting. Uh, just, I'll, I'll start with just a very broad outline. It's, it's, a, it's a combination of an introduction to the conceptual material with uh, actual experience and practice of, of working dreams. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll introduce uh, in the first sessions uh, the, the conceptual material behind this and uh, a kind of a list of resources of how you can begin uh, in your own formation to begin to work with your own dreams. That's, that's the key to being a good spiritual director and helping directees, companions with, with their dreams, you have to do the work yourself. And so we'll have some uh, quick uh, resources about how to begin to do that and, and work those uh, dreams yourself. Uh, we'll have uh, sessions on, we'll have a session on uh, creative embodiment 
as another way to take the dream forward. So uh, we we have a, a, a number of practices of amplification and association that will help you unpack the dream. And another very important uh, way that we do this, that we teach at the Hayden Institute is to uh, get this out in some creative expression. So some kind of ritual, some sort of art project. So um, we'll, we'll have that as a, as a practice. And we'll have uh, at least two sessions where uh, everyone in that's uh, in the webinar will be a member of a dream group. And that's a very uh, specific practice of, of projective uh, dream uh, meth of a, a method of unpacking dreams, projective work. Uh, it's a it's an offshoot of Jungian psychology. It was developed by a psychologist Montague Ullman a few years ago, popularized by Jeremy Taylor. And we've been using it at the Hayden Institute for about 27 years. So uh, it's just a great practice, and a lot of spiritual directors. Uh, have dream groups, and what happens is people will sign up for maybe let's let's meet for six weeks as a dream group to uh, begin to unpack the meaning of dreams, and then that's that's often a way that directors will build their practice because first people will sign up for a dream group and they'll oh they'll get a sense of what's possible and then uh, move into a you know spiritual companioning relationships so. It's just, I think it's a great combination of the conceptual stuff, uh, lots of resources to carry the work forward, and then an actual experience of being with others and working with your dreams. Danielle, you want to add something to that? I mean, I yeah, that's, um, I think the, the great thing about it is we're not just going to talk to you about dreams, um, which would be really fascinating and interesting and probably worth taking anyway. But I think the the real goal is um, you just really can't get it until you just do it. You just got to jump into a green dream group and start doing it. And um, then those light bulbs start coming on and it, you know, things start clicking and you're like, Oh, you have to feel your way into dream work. And so um, I feel like the way that we've designed the course really offers, you know, some practical things like people will leave with tools of, okay, I had this weird dream, now what? You'll know some, some things to do with that, um, to take with you. And it'll also just give you a taste of, of how to be in a, a dream group and what that looks like and what that experience is like. And like Alan said, we hope that it will encourage people to really dive into this more fully um, to just experience the power of it. So I think that combination of content and experience is gonna be really rich for people. That sounds great. And and so so you mentioned tools, uh, uh, people being able to work away with some tools for what it, and I'm, I'm interpreting uh, here for what sounded like self-analysis, if you will. Right. And so my, my next question is, what about in the context of the spiritual direct, direction relationship, spiritual companion relationship? How can you use how do you use dreams on a in a one-to-one -one spiritual direction relationship how does that work and can you give some example obviously without re revealing any confidentialities can you give us some examples but maybe i'll start with the conceptual thing danielle and i bet you have some really delightful examples um but what you know, we, we teach this work in two-year certification programs at the Hayden Institute, and it's, and, and we have, uh, we have lots of, we have therapists and clergy and, uh, and just regular people who are interested in dreams all sign up for this thing. So when a, when a therapist is using, learns to use dream work in their therapy practice, that's, that's one thing. And that's a, that's a great tool. Uh, if you're not a therapist, if you're a spiritual director, Really, what you're doing is you're you're teaching your the person you're companioning companioning to work with their own dream. You're 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 showing them. You're giving them example of your own work, and you're giving them the tools in the conversation that you're having 
and as, as well as resources that you can pass on to them to say this this is how you can work with your own dreams. So you're really you're educating them, you're giving them resources. Um, uh, if you're not a therapist, you're not acting as a therapist, but you are you are giving them this process that will enable them to open up their soul, do the shadow work. Um, and it's all, I'll just say one other thing, which is um, one, of, one of my favorite teachers has this quote, uh, you, you alone can become yourself, but you cannot become yourself alone. You alone can become yourself, but you cannot become yourself alone. In dream work, we need a companion or we need a group to to help us see only the dreamer is the authority on what the dream means nobody else a highly trained union analyst cannot tell you what your dream means only you know what your dream means you're the authority but you need a companion in order to <clears throat> name that for you when and, and when they name it as a question when you're you're a spiritual director you name it as a question you name it as a wondering and and when you hear it, when you hear the truth, oh, you have that aha. The dime drops and you go, that's it. That I feel it. I've got a chill up my back. I know that's what I know that's what the answer is. So um yeah, it's it, that's enough for me. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I um the only thing I'd add is that I think um that sort of sacred dyad that we have in spiritual direction uh, is so profoundly supportive of dream work for that very reason. You know, dreams come to tell us something that we do not already know. They tell us an unconscious truth. They're not going to say the thing that we already know that we're good at, or we already know that we're bad at. They're going to tell us what something subtly that we, we are unaware of in those, in those realities within ourselves. And because we're unaware of it, we really have to have someone else help us point it out because we just, you know, it's a, we are unable to see this thing. And so the dream is coming to help us, but having a companion who is asking the right questions. And also, you know, if you're in spiritual direction with somebody, you sort of already know what it is that they're working on. And you know that that's going to be in alignment because that's, that's how um, the beyond works this out. Um, so as you can be in that work together, um, there is this beautiful deepening that happens that, um, yeah, you, you can, you can work a dream on your own, but it's just, it's so much richer and deeper. And, uh, like we were saying at the beginning, you just get to the, to the essence of that so much faster. If you're doing that with your spiritual director or, um, with the person that your companion is, it's just Right. Yeah. All right. I have one more question, and then um, we can we can wrap this up. I'll invite you after this also to say whatever you know to basically invite people if that's okay. But the the last question is around shadows, right? Shadows, nightmares, um, things that most of us run away from, right? I in, sometimes in dreams, quite literally, like my shadow's coming after me, and I'm running as fast as I can to get away from it. And so how do we learn, how can we learn to not run away from the truth of our shadows, I guess is the question I'm asking. How can we learn to turn and face our shadows, turn and embrace our shadows, maybe even learn how to sleep with our shadows? Um, be curious about your response to that. <laughs> um. I'll start uh, just because I'm sure we're both laughing that uh, when I was a, a student at Hayden, that was my final project was on nightmares. So that was just um, for whatever reason, something that I thought a lot about. And so uh, I could talk for like four hours about this, but the quickest way I could say it is um, what I know for sure is that a nightmare is particularly important to bring into the spiritual direction container. Um, because that is often the richest and most urgent and most full of potential material in your soul. Um, it is not anything to be afraid of. In fact, uh, 
the moments that I have had working with people's nightmares um, have been the most transformative, the most beautiful, the ones where people have cried the most in this realization of, of something um, being broken open. And there is always strength and wholeness on the other side of it. And so uh, I think nightmares are a perfect example of this thing that we really are so reticent to step into, but the minute that we're willing to just look at it and receive its wisdom, it is so, so, so powerful. So. Great. Thank you. Yeah. And, and if, if you are uh, particularly stubborn or resistant to resistance to change as I am, uh, you'll have regular nightmares. <laughs> It's uh, it's really it's a it's a gift from the dream maker to uh, you know, it's just a little kind of slap on the cheek to wake up. It's like, Alan, you have to pay attention to this. Stop avoiding this. This is really important for your wholeness, for your health, for uh, for your connection to life. Uh, pay attention to this, and and uh, so when I get lazy and when I get sloppy, you know, I'll just like. I wake up in the morning with a dream and I go, oh, oh, I'm in a hurry. I need, I'm not going to write that down. So the dream maker has patience with me. That goes on for a while. But then if I keep doing that, I will get a nightmare mm. and I can't ignore it. I've just, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just captivated by the, by the nightmare. And so I write it down and you first write those down. They, it just doesn't make any sense at all. But, you know, and then I'll take that to a group or I'll take that to my spiritual director and we'll begin to unpack it. And I'll go, oh my gosh, of course, that's, that's the thing I've been avoiding. That's, that's the, so it's, uh, as Danielle was saying, it's just this beautiful unfolding that starts with a very scary uh, encounter. All right. Um, so the last thing I'll ask is if you can invite people to join you. I want to welcome all of you and invite um, my SDI friends to join us for this webinar on dreams. Um, I imagine if you're here, you love to swim in the depths of things and dream work is the very best place I know to swim in the depths. Um, dreams are delightfully weird and impossible and mysterious and they will bring you to the edge of questioning and wondering in a way that few other things do. And wouldn't it be great to offer yourself some space in your life to invite that, um, that deep depth into not, not only your own life, but into your practice and how you can companion others in this place of great depth and mystery. So come and join us. So I'm just really thrilled that we're uh, offering this webinar on on dream work uh, because it is such an important practice uh, for spiritual companions, both for our own formation and for the help that you're going to be offering those that you're companioning. Uh, dream work is can be just such an important uh, spiritual practice, and this webinar is going to just open up for you the uh, kind of the, the, the basic ideas. It's gonna give you the conceptual material. It's gonna offer resources that you can use yourself and that you can offer to your directees. And then it's gonna give you an immediate experience of being, of working your own dreams and working others' dreams. So you'll have that practical, hands-on kind of experience. So in a very short amount of time, you're gonna get a lot of both information and experience. It is, um, you know, when you do this process, it does feel like magic. Uh, for me, it is, uh, it's in a direct encounter with the mystery, with the divine. Uh, and and it, it changes your life uh, every time. I think, uh, and I think I want to just, there, there's, a, there's a poem that I want to read that captures uh, some of the inspiration of that for me. It's called the Mending Space, and the poet is Krista Barmer. Marry your dreams to your common life. Wed the unlikely lovers at sunrise. Gift them open windows, soft music, and flowers from the garden. 
cook them good food, pour the good wine, and under the light of a waxing moon, make them a bed of linen. Marry your dreams to your common life. I'm, I'm excited and, and uh, hope that you will join us for this webinar.